Hey guys, so today we are gonna be making this in Blender. Let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into a new scene. Press Shift A and search for a UV sphere. Add a couple of subdivisions. Right click shade smooth. Go ahead and add a plane. Scale it up by 2.5. Rotate it along the X axis. And move it along the Y axis. G, Y, 2. Now let's go ahead and add a camera. Press Shift A. Camera. Hit the tilde key and go into the front view. Press Ctrl Alt 0 to snap your camera into the view. Change your resolution to around 2000 pixels. And then adjust your y axis to around minus 3.5. Now let's hop in or into the shaders tab and give our planes an emission shader. Select the plane, hit new, delete the principal BSDF, press shift A, search for an emission node. Give it a strength of about 5. Do the exact same thing with the other two planes. Give this one a strength of about 25 and give this one a strength of about 15. Now let's go ahead, select the sphere and hop in into our main shader. Before we start, go ahead into edit, preferences, under add-ons, type in node wrangler and enable the add-on. Okay, now let's get started. We'll be adding five different shapes and mixing them along as we go. Let's start with shape number one, which is this one. Press shift A, search for a wave texture. Select the wave texture and press Ctrl T. We will be using the UV coordinates. So take the UV and plug it into the mapping node. Set the scale to around 1.9. Ctrl Shift click on the wave texture to preview it and go into your object tab and press Z head into the material preview. Now we will be using the dodge and burn technique to make this gradient constant. So press shift A, search for a mix RGB node. Set this to color burn. Duplicate this node and set this to color dodge. Set the dodge factor to 1 and give it a white color. And set the burn color to black and set the factor to around 0.175. So the burn node controls the thickness of our gradient and the dodge controls the gradient. So this is our shape number one. Let's go ahead and frame this. Select all the nodes, press Ctrl J. In the ends panel, give it a color. Label it as shape 1. Now let's go ahead and get on with our shape number 2, which is this one. Press Shift A, search for a brick texture. Select the node, press Ctrl T, and plug in the UV coordinates. Give it a scale of around 20. Motor size 2.1, smoothness to around 0.5, and then give it a width of around 0.25 and a height of 0.5. Now let's go ahead and add a color ramp. Press Shift A, search for a color ramp. Change the mode to constant. 
flip the handles and set the black marker to around 0 0.05 so this is our shape number two let's go ahead and frame this as well Okay, so now for shape number three, let's go ahead, press shift A and add a noise texture. Select the node, press control T and plug in the object coordinates. Give it a detail of zero, a roughness of zero and a distortion of seven. Press shift A, search for a color ramp change the mode to constant flip the handles and give the black marker a value of 0.4 go ahead and frame it and label it as shape 3 now for shape 4 which is this one press shift a search for a gradient texture set the mode to radial Hit Ctrl T and plug in the object coordinates. Ctrl Shift click on the gradient texture. Go ahead and add a color ramp. Set the mode to constant. Add a marker. Change it to white. And give this a black. Set the black marker to around 0.75 and the white one to around 0.35. Go ahead and frame it, give it a label. We'll be using shape number four twice. And this shape will basically be acting as our mask. We'll duplicate this entire node setup by pressing Shift D. And then we'll only be changing our color ramp values by setting the white marker to around 0.15 and the black marker to around 7.45. Now for shape number 5, which is this one, press shift A, search for a wave texture. Select the node, press ctrl T, plug in the object coordinates, set the bands to Z axis. Give it a scale of 3, a distortion of minus 9.6, and details to 0, detail roughness to 0, and a phase offset of 4. Change the Y location values to around minus 0.9, and set the Y scale to 0.8. Press shift a search for a color ramp, set the mode to constant and set the Y marker to around 0.95. Select the nodes and press ctrl J to frame it. Label it as shape number 5. So now we've got our 5 basic shapes. This is shape number 1, shape number 2, shape number 3, shape number 4 which we'll be using twice as a mask and shape number five okay so now let's go ahead and start mixing our shapes press shift a search for a mix rgb node take our shape one and plug it into the factor and take our shape two and plug it into color two set the color one to complete white Control shift click on the node to preview it We'll go ahead and select all these nodes, press Ctrl J and frame it as well and label it as mix one. Give it a color. Okay, so now we need to mix shape one and shape three. We'll just go ahead and duplicate this entire node by pressing Shift T. Press Alt P to get it out of the main node. Press Shift A and add another mix RGB node. Plug shape 1 into the factor 
and shape 3 into color 1. Set color 2 to black. Press Ctrl Shift click to preview it. So this is our mix 1 and this is our mix 2. We'll go ahead and frame this entire setup as well. So now we've got our two mixes which is this mix 1 and mix 2. Now we'll be using our mask nodes which is shape 4a and 4b on these two mixes. So let's take 4b up here and add another mix RGB node. Set the mode to multiply. Set these modes to multiply as well. Plug in our shape 4 into the factor and our mix 1 into color 2. Set color 1 to white. So this was before the mask. Now this is after the mask. Before, after. Okay, so we'll do the exact same process that we did here. We'll duplicate this node by pressing Shift D. Plug the color into the color 2 and the factor and the color into the factor and go ahead and preview this. So this is our mix 2 after the mask. This was before the mask, this is after the mask. Now we need to add these two masks together. I'll just duplicate this node by pressing Shift D and take shape 4A into color 2 and take shape 4B into color 1. We'll set the mode to multiply and give it a factor of 1. Before we proceed further, we need to add an invert node by pressing shift A invert and plug it in our shape 4A. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on our shape number 5, which is this one right over here. We'll duplicate the mix RGB node over here. Plug the color into color 2 and we'll take mix 1 and plug it into color 1. And for the factor, we'll be plugging in our mask from shape 4B. So this is what our shape was before. This is what it is after. Now we need to add another invert node right over here. Press shift A, search for an invert node and plug it into our factor. Okay, so here we go. We've got shape number 5 right where we want it. Okay, so let's go ahead and frame this as mix 3. And let's go ahead and frame this as our addition of mask. Okay, now let's go ahead and add mix 1 and mix 2 together. We'll duplicate this node right here. Plug mix 1 into color 2 and plug mix 2 into color 1. And take addition of masks and plug it into the factor. So this is what our result looks like right now. Let's go ahead and frame this entire setup. Now we need to add mix 3 to our addition of mix 1 and 2. For this, go ahead and press shift A, search for a mix RGB node. Set the mode to multiply and give it a factor of 1. Control shift click on the result. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the colors in. Press shift A, search for a color ramp. Move it to constant. Get the white marker to around 0.3 and set these colors in. We'll plug the color into the base color of our principal BSDF. Plug it into the surface. For the metallic values, we'll be adding a noise texture. 
Press Shift S, Search Noise, and a color ramp. Plug the factor into the factor, color into the metallic values. Set the roughness to around 0.4. For the noise values, set the detail to around 10 and distortion to around 0.6. Slide the black slider to around 0.5. Okay, so now we'll be adding bump to the entire material. Before we do that, go into the render properties and switch over to cycles. Resample your viewport and your render samples. Go ahead and press shift A, search for a bump node. We'll duplicate the noise texture along with the color ramp by pressing shift D. We'll set the scale to around 25 and the distortion to around 1.5, detail to around 5 and we'll plug this color into the height. We'll also press Ctrl T on the noise texture and select the object coordinates and give it a scale to around 2. So this is what our bump looks like but we only need this bump in the black parts of our material. So for that we press Shift A and search for a mix RGB node. Plug the factor into color 1 and take the result and plug it into the factor and set the color 2 to white. Now as you can see we only have that bump in the black parts of our material output. You can adjust the scale more if you like to. We we'll plug the bump into the normal socket. Go ahead and frame this as well and label it as bump. Okay, so before we get into our rendered view, we need to enable our lights. We'll go ahead into the wall tab. Press shift A, search for an environment texture. And we'll plug in an external HDRI. I'll leave a link to this HDRI down below. Select the node, press Ctrl T. And change the angle to 45. Make sure your render engine is cycles. You can go ahead and check the transparent box in the film panel. Now you can adjust the bump strength right around here. You can also adjust your contrast down below here in the output tab in the color management. You can go ahead and give it a high contrast if you need to. Select your folder where you need to save the file and then go ahead and hit render. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.